What is going on everybody? You're watching a brand new video here from Car Boot Collectors. I am your host, JM, and today we're going to be doing a action figure mystery box unboxing stroke beer review. We're going to mix it up a little bit. I've been uh, very into watching beer reviews on YouTube recently, so I thought, you know what? I'm going to go down to M&S and buy some upmarket brews I've never tried before. I'm going to do a couple of videos in the future. We'll review them alongside opening the box, because why bloody not? And I didn't want to start off with anything too wild. I thought we'll keep it familiar. So I went with one of my favourite brews. Had it many times before. And that is the Hop House 13. So we'll get, get to that in a minute. Very, very nice beverage. I have poured it into this little tank card here. You know, when I'm at home, this is, a, this is the only beverage, in my opinion, for consuming the only vessel for consuming beverages from. It's bloody nice. It's just a nice shape. It's chunky. It's uh, it's just a nice feeling vessel. I uh, got this at a little bloody craft fair like last year. Very good vessel. Recommended. Yeah, very tasty brew that. Very nice. Uh, so anyway, on to the main segment of the video. The bloody, the bloody meat and potatoes of the video. This is the lot of figures which I bought. So... Currently, you know, we're in lockdown, as you will bloody know. Uh, there's a lot of lots coming up on eBay. I've been doing searches very regularly, you know, action figure lot, action figure collection, action figure bundle. And there's been a lot of lots popping up of just random stuff. And you can get some bloody good deals. There's some really, really, you know, some of it just goes for barely any money at all. Uh, you can just get some really nice lots of just mixed stuff, you know, collections and stuff. I mean, for example, I bought a very nice lot of Family Guy figures the other day. Um... You know, not the most, most well-collected line of figures I know, but, you know, you get a good deal on a good lot of figures. It's good stuff to have, you know, sort of available. Um, I've got other stuff as well. I know this is slightly better stuff. I've bought these recently, a full set of NECA Django Unchained figures. You can't see because my bloody hair's in the way, but I was raising my eyebrows there because these are bloody nice. These are very expensive, very rare figures. Um... But yeah, bottom line, you know, the focus of this video, you can get some really good bundles of just random stuff. I think people are clearing out their cupboards. Obviously, the car boots aren't really on at the moment. The conventions aren't on. The toy fairs aren't on. So you have a lot of people, I think, that sell at those kind of venues. And they haven't got any way of shifting their stuff. So they're just chucking it up on eBay as a job lot. And uh, that's where this lot comes into play. So this is one of a few lots of thought recently. I've got more on the way. So I'll do videos of those when they arrive. And this is just a big old bundle of random carded figures and uh, other bits of random memorabilia. Um, this was an auction. I won it for a little more than I wanted to. Uh, there was, it's a really, it was a very appealing lot to me. There's some really sort of nice, unique things in here, some stuff I've never seen before. So for me, it was very appealing. And I put in a high bid to ensure I got it, but I wasn't really hoping to win it for that much. And then I did, but it's fine. It's still a good lot. There's, a few, there's some very nice stuff in here. So this lot cost me about 60 quid all in. There's about 20 pieces in here, so it works out about three pound an item which is fine. Uh, some items in there are barely worth three quid. And then, you know, then, you know there's some 25, 30 pound items. So it all evens out. It's a good lot of mixed stuff. Um, the sort of stuff I like to, you know, keep in stock. So if you see something in this video, you, um, you know, you think that's a bloody nice item. I wouldn't mind getting my mitts on that. Uh, feel free to hit me up on Instagram, my Facebook page, or, and if not, you know, it'll all be up on my eBay shop very soon. So if you see something you like, you know, bloody hit me up. So, uh, yeah, with no further ado, let's bloody get into it. And we'll, we'll get back to the brew in a bit. We'll give that a bit of a review, maybe at the end. That's probably a better shout. Very tasty stuff, very tasty stuff. I imagine most people are just going to be here for the figures. So we'll just do that at the end. It's, it's not important. Um, so we'll start off with this bad boy right here. I've never had any of these carded. I've had quite a few of them loose before. This is a Gladiators figure. This is the female contender. Um, very cool figures. These are... You know, not super well collected. You know, people do collect them, but they aren't worth a, a crazy amount of money. Um, and they're very, you know, they're very affordable. I mean, even on card like this, it's only sort of a 15, 20 pound item. So if you wanted to get a full set of these, they really don't cost very much money. Um, made by Hornby, which is quite unusual. Obviously, they're more well known for their model trains. Um, but yeah, they made them, um, they were at least licensed, were licensed to manufacture a few different action figure ranges in the 90s, including these ones. So there you go, female contender. Um, one of the slightly more uncommon figures from the range, but as I say, not particularly valuable. You see the other ones on the back there. You got Bloody Wolf, pretty classic. You got Jet, very popular figure. Uh, and you got all the play sets. So yeah, pretty nice condition. Not, not, not in bad nick, that one. That's fair enough. That's quite a cool little piece. 
Uh, next up, we've got one of these. Now, I have never even seen these before. And I used to be quite into Halo stuff. I used to be quite into collecting the McFarlane figures and the Joyride Studios figures, saying that. Um, but yeah, I've never seen these before. So these are made by Mega Blocks. These are called Halo Universe, of the Metal series. And they're just little tiny metal figures. As I say, I'd never seen them before. They're not... Um, they're not super valuable. I did have a quick look on eBay just because I wasn't familiar with these. Um, a little set like this, you know, they're like sort of 10 quid, 15 quid sealed. They seem to be quite rare, they're just not super valuable. But very nifty, they're very cool, they're like little tiny metal figures. They're very um, very nice little things. They do they do vehicles and stuff as well. I think these are supposed to be played with, with like the, um, the Mega Blocks or Building Block toys they made. Sort of Lego-esque ones. Um, but yeah, very nifty little set. I've never seen them before, didn't they made them. Uh, next up, we have got Fred Flintstone. Now, this is a little PVC figure made by Mattel from the movie. It's one of the things in this box. It's not even worth what I put. You know, I say everything in it costs about £2.50, three quid. It's probably like a pound, two pound item. I'll probably put this aside and take it to a convention or a or a toy fair like these figures they're just they are they are really not desirable like they did proper action figures and they did these little pvc ones none of it really holds any value at all so no one wants them you can get a full set of these uh for really cheap if you if you were into this film if you bloody love this film for whatever reason you could get a whole collection of for barely any money at all it just is it's hard stuff to move and i had a look on ebay and someone sold a full set of the carded action figures for what like 10 quid like they're bloody not the most desirable figures, but, um, you know, nifty if you like them. I've never seen the film. Don't know if it's any good. Uh, next up, we've got one of these. I remember seeing these in, like, Game and Game Station, those kind of shops back in the day. This is a little Mario figure. I don't know who it's made by. It has actually got a game warranty sticker on it, a game uh, security sticker. Who are these bloody made by? Looks like they're made by a company called... Global Holdings. Very professional sounding. Little figure of Fire Mario. Uh, his skin looks, like, very pink. I mean, you know, Mario's got that classic sort of flesh tone, but his skin there is, like... I mean, I'm going to be honest, he looks like he's necked a few tinnies. He, uh, he looks very red. But, you know, a little nice little PVC figure. It's quite detailed. The paint's a bit rubbish. But, again, you know, whoever sold this stuff, as I think this lot came from someone who probably sold at conventions and stuff, because they've all got price stickers on, which I haven't got. I've got around to removing it. I will, you know, remove the stickers, clean them all up. Before I do anything with them, um, but that's the figure. I mean, he's got it. Probably, he had it priced at three quid. That's probably about what it's going for. I probably wouldn't bother listing it on eBay. Just you know, by the time you, you sell it and you take out the postage and stuff, if it's only going to go for a couple of quid, it's not really worth doing anything with. Uh, so that's probably something I'll put aside for a convention for whenever those start again, which is probably going to be bloody months away uh, before. But at least before I sell it them anyway. Um, Okay, so we'll do these three as a little trio next because they're all the same thing and quite frankly they're bloody boring so I don't really want to spend too much time on them. These are um, made by Decca Toys, which uh, it's a very sort of generic toy company from the 90s. They did a lot of stuff, they did a lot of noddy stuff, but they did a lot of stuff like, you know, Captain Scarlet, you know, plaster mould kits like Thunderbird, dress up costumes, that kind of stuff. They did a lot of stuff like that. Um, and evidently they made Noddy figurines as well. So we've got bloody Noddy, the man himself. We've got Big Ears. Although I think they've changed his name these days. Because Big Ears is... Apparently something which people were bullied by, I think. I don't know. People used to call me Big Ears back in the day. So very offensive for me specifically. But yeah, Big Ears, I think he's called. I don't know if he's called that now, but he was. And then we've got PC Plod. The Fuzz. Uh, so yeah, we've got those three there. Then again, something like, I mean, as a trio, I mean, this is the sort of thing, if you were looking for these, they are probably quite rare. I would imagine they're quite hard to find on card, but I can't imagine there's a lot of people after them. I value something like this set of three figures at somewhere around 15 quid, you know, like a five or each 20 pound free postage. Um, but you know, they might be a little more than that, I'm not too sure. Haven't done too much research on them yet, but Noddy's just one of those properties, like everyone knows about it. Everyone is aware of what Noddy is, but it just doesn't it just doesn't sell. Whenever I've had Noddy stuff, it's not something people are really actively collecting. Uh, I mean, I've had, like, you know, Noddy bloody toothbrush holders and that kind of thing. And it's the sort of thing, if you had, like, a, I don't know, WWF Hulk Hogan toothbrush holder, you're going to have 20 people immediately wanting it. But a bloody Noddy one, 
It's not something anyone wants. It's just not a property that's very well collected these days. Uh, but there you go, whatever, whatever. Still okay, I'm sure someone will want them. Um, next up are these little little things. I'm not too familiar with these. I've never seen these before. Uh, these are made by a company called Motorama. Never heard of them. But we've got three of them here. Uh, so, you know, I'll probably do them as a bundle. I did look them up quickly. And again, they don't really hold a whole lot of value. So it just makes sense really for me to do them as a little group. Uh, but yeah, they're Disney cars. So we've got bloody little bloody police car, the Fuzz. We've got a little Mickey Mouse car. And we've got a little Donald Duck car, which I've dropped. Uh, so there you go. It's going all fuzzy. It's getting a bit dark. The bloody Fuzz. Uh, it's getting all dark. So, um... It's not going to come out of the greatest quality, but I just wanted to get this video done because I haven't made one in forever. Uh, but yeah, these look like really nice little models, sort of die cast and plastic. Um, I hate the Comic Sans writing on the boxes. Like, bloody hell, look at that. Uh, but yeah, those are quite nice little things. I'm not, not familiar with those, but they're pretty nifty. Again, Disney's one of those things. There's so many Disney things to collect if you're a Disney collector. A lot of it. It's very hard to shift, in my opinion. You know, you get stuff like the snow globes, where people do specifically collect the snow globes, and you have people that will collect, say, Finding Nemo stuff. But when it comes to the more generic stuff like those, it can be a bit hard to move. Probably not a whole lot of value in this. So I haven't looked them up, but I would say they're probably worth a couple. You know, what I pay probably three quid each. I'll probably do them as a trio for maybe 20 quid posted. Obviously, I'll look them up, and if there are any more, there'll be more than that. But I'm going to assume somewhere around there. Uh, okay. So on to the next one. This is really generic. This is a really oddball item to just be in it because the rest of it's all like action figures. There's a Marvin's Amazing Magic Trick kit, uh, which is new and sealed. I don't think it's got a whole lot of value, but there it is. Probably about a tenner free postage if if I can be bothered to list it for that. Probably 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 will to be honest, but probably not a, not a whole lot of money and at the moment. There's things like that which normally, if I got something like this in a job lot like this, normally I would just put it in my pile of junk to take to the car boot sale but at the moment where well, there's no car boots on it looks like i'm not going to be doing any fair shows car boots for the foreseeable future um, i may as well just list it because you know it's you know probably a tenner free postage and you get a couple quid out the end of it after you take off the fees and the postage but it's something which normally would be easy to take to just the car boot and take a couple quid but whatever it's fine it's one of those one of those things we're getting into some of the more interesting stuff now i've purposely left it to last uh, not this. This still is, still is in the category of boring junk. And we've got a Toy Story buddy pack, action links, um, of Buzz Lightyear and Stretch. Now it looks like there's some kind of dubious splatter on the box there. I don't know what that's all about. Going to need a little bit of a polish up, I would say. A bit of the old disinfectant. Uh, but yeah, Toy Story action links. This was their sort of Star Wars Galactic Heroes type range. You know, they were like a big thing around this time, you know, sort of late 2000s. You had like Transformer Hero Box and bloody Hasbro Heroes and all those things. And this was their sort of little stylized PVC figures. They did play sets, vehicles. I don't think they really took off. I think these might have actually been in Poundland at some time. But, uh, you know, again, a couple of quid probably. Not a great, not great thing. It's just part of the lot. It's this sort of thing. I wouldn't have bought that on its own, but it came as the bundle. So, you know, take it with it. Uh, next up, this I was really excited to have back in my possession because I used to have one of these back in the day and I didn't know how much I needed it until I saw it again because it's bloody amazing. So this is a Reservoir Dogs in your pocket. Bloody little key ring. These things, are, to be fair, these things are actually quite collectible. I've had some of these and they can go for quite good money. You know, they did, I've had a Mr. T one that went sealed in the box like this for like 25 quid. You think, why? Why would you collect these? But well, people do. Um, this is the Reservoir Dogs one. Unfortunately, this one, the bubble has come loose in the post, so it's loose. But, uh, you know, it's still sort of minty, fresh condition. Uh, if you don't know what these are, these were like a fad in the sort of early to mid-2000s. You press the buttons on them, and they just say phrases from the film. So I had this one back in the day. I found it at a car booty when... I didn't even know what Reservoir Dogs was. I don't know why I bought it, but I had one of these that I bought at the car boot when I was, you know, younger. And uh, yeah, it just makes noises. You know, but then it's so, the audio on this is so terrible. So it says phrases like, I'm going to do it in the way it does it because it's all fuzzy and distorted. It's like, I'm trying to remember the bloody phrase now. What does he say? Mr. Brown sounds a little too close to Mr. Shit. Mr. Pink sounds like Mr. Pussy. It sounded exactly like that. 
So uh, it doesn't have any batteries in it, unfortunately, so I can't demonstrate, but that's exactly what it sounds like. Okay, next time. Not worth very much. That's actually quite, the, out of all of these in your pocket machines, this one is it's not worth very much, mate. It's kind of weird, but I'm probably going to keep that. I'll, I'll, I'll put some new batteries in it and uh, humour might ensue. Oh, I'm not going to guarantee it, but it might do. Okay, so next, so this is one of the few items in it that is actually not sealed. We've only got a few more bits to go. Um, so yeah, this is uh, a Toy Biz Hasbro figure of Bullseye. Um, and it comes in his little box. I don't know if it's got paperwork with it in here. No, it looks like it does. It's got his little bag. Um, but this was a mail-away figure from... Uh, what was it from? It's probably on it. It comes with a little... All of his original paperwork from when it was mailed off for. So it comes with... What did it come with? It came, I think it was Toy Fair, is it a Toy Fair exclusive? Yeah, it looks like it was a Toy Fair exclusive. Um, but yeah, you'd mail off for it from Toy Fair magazine, and you'd get this bullseye figure. Um, yeah, and he's in bloody nice condition. It looks like someone's just cracked him open out of the box and just hasn't done anything with it. It's in minty, fresh condition. Um, not a particularly valuable one. Like all, again, this is one of those ranges, like Gladiators, if you're into Marvel figures, um, these figures from the 90s are really easy to collect. They really, they don't run very much money at all. They really are quite inexpensive. You can build up a big collection of them for for not very much money. Like you go to, I mean, some toy fairs, people will have a lot of these for, you know, five, ten quid each sealed on card. Uh, certain figures obviously are more money. Um, but yeah, I've certainly seen these around before. They, people don't ask a lot of money for them. They're not very well collected. At least they are very well collected, but there's just so many of them about. They just don't go for very much money. But yeah, Bullseye. It's a very cool, very cool figure. I've never had too many of these. But there you go. There's Bullseye. Pretty, pretty nifty. Okay, next up. This is a really cool little thing. I do like this. This is from the Warner Brothers Studios, which I don't... Or the Warner Brothers Studio Shop, which I don't think is open anymore. I think it used to be, I thought I saw a, um, a dress on the bottom of the tube, but there isn't. I, can't, I don't know when the War where the Warner Brothers Studio Store was, but I seem to find a lot of stuff for it, like Bugs Bunny statues. I have a Scooby-Doo bobblehead at the moment, which was exclusive to this place. And it did a lot of Batman stuff, because it was about in the sort of 90s when the Batman animated series was like the big thing. So you get a lot of Batman animated series memorabilia, which was exclusive to the Warner Brothers Studio store. Um, and this is a miniature classic collection, uh, Robin. It's a little tiny, you can barely see it. It's so dark. It's, it's, it's not even late. Like, it's it's nearly 7 o'clock, and it's, it's gone really grainy. I don't know why, why that is the case. But, uh, yeah, we've got um, Robin there, a little tiny plastic piece. I am going to take him out of the tube. You know, it is sealed, but the... The bloody tape is pretty much dried up, so it's not going to matter if I take him out. Uh, so there you go, there's Robin. I thought it was metal, but it's actually made of plastic. So yeah, very little detailed little figurine. He's, he's all right, I suppose he's pretty nifty if you like Batman. Uh, I did have a, I'd never seen these before. I had a little quick look on um, Google. They made quite a few of these. They made like Scooby-Doo ones, they made bloody the Jetsons. They made, they made loads of stuff for these little figures, so. If you, had, if you had a few of them lined up, they'd look pretty pretty cool, I'd say. So there you go, there's Robin. Chuck him over there. Uh, next up, we have got another another Quentin Tarantino objet. Um, and this is something which I thought was going to be worth a couple of quid. I think this is from a loot crate. Um, it's a Pulp Fiction wallet. Um, it's still brand new and sealed. You can see the guy was asking a fiver for it uh, on his stool, I assume, if he, if he had a stool. Um, and I assume this was probably going to be worth a couple of quid. Because like I, said, I think it's from a loot crate. Um, but these are on eBay. They go for like 20 quid. Like, but yeah, why? You can buy a decent wallet for less than that. This is just like a little, really like, clever thing. But I'm not going to complain. But there it is. A uh, Pulp Fiction wallet. I've never I've never seen Pulp Fiction. I really should. Um, but yeah, there it is. A little wallet. Pretty boring. Chuck it over there. Uh, next up, we're on to the last couple of bits. Now, this stuff, this is like pretty nifty stuff. This is like the stuff I really sort of wanted. So, or not these, not these quite yet, but we're almost at that point. So, uh, we've got a couple of these. These are Kubrick. Are these Mini Mates? 
I think these are mini mates, aren't they? I know, I think they're mini mates, but they're little blind boxes for the Matrix Reloaded. And we've got a Neo here. He's still sealed in his little baggie. And then we've also got Trinity, who is also sealed in her little baggie. So there is those. Uh, these were like... I'm going to say these were like a pop vinyl level fad in the early 2000s. Like, everything had these little bloody mini mates. And, I mean, they still make them now. They're still relatively popular. People do still still uh, collect them. They still make them. Um, but I think there was a point where these were just a big thing and everything had these little mini mates. Um, yeah, made by Medicom and Kubrick or whatever you, however you say that. Kubrick, Kubrick, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I've got those two there. These are actually like the most common ones from the from the set. But uh, you know, as, yeah, I suppose they're the more recognisable characters. That's so fine. I'll probably do this as a pair. Um, they're not they're not worth crazy amounts of money. I think they're about you know seven or eight quid each. So I'll probably do them as a pair. Uh, all right, here we go on to the last three items. These are the cool the cool items which I wanted from the bundle. I'm gonna have a little beverage, little sipperoo first. Very tasty, very tasty. Um, so yeah, these are the three items I wanted. I mean, not specifically. I say it's a whole lot. It's, it's all you know, very nice stuff to have sort of available. It's all sort of quite sellable, apart from the more shit on you know, like the Disney cars and that. It's like it's whatever. But um, you know, like the Batman figure and the bloody mini mates and that kind of thing. It's all sort of nice stuff, which is quite easy to shift. Um, but these are the three items which. Which I want. These are like the cool, um, the cool things which I thought, yeah, go on and boom, let's build on that. So I haven't been able to find out this dude yet. I don't know what he's called, but it is a Hyper Hobby exclusive Kubrick Mini Mate figure. I think Hyper Hobby is a magazine. I'm not too sure though, so do not quote me on that. But I think it's a magazine. I um, mean, it isn't sealed, so we can crack him open. Um, but it's really bloody cool. I think this is a an Ultraman villain. I have had some of the like Bandai vinyl figures before of this guy. I think he's from Ultraman. But this is a sort of see-through blue, if that's what you call it, Glico variant. Dunno. Uh, but he's very nifty. He's very cool. I do like that. Um, it's not the sort of thing that really interests me, but it's, it's cool stuff to sort of have. Um, and it's not the sort of stuff you see all the time. So it's something, you know, it's a very nice thing to get as part of a lot. So uh, there he is. What is he? He's, uh, he's got a little hologram on the bag. Let's see if I can read it. A 2004 Medicom toy. It's not not very not very helpful. It doesn't really tell you what it is. But I think the box is all in Japanese, which isn't very helpful. But I think I think I'm pretty certain he's from Ultraman. So. Uh, I have to do some more research on that. I don't. I don't know what it's worth. I don't have a clue, um, but it's very cool. So that's that's something at least. Now the last couple of bits. These are what I saw on the lot, and these are probably the most expensive items here. These are these are really hard to find in the UK, and um, these are probably worth somewhere around you know 25, 30 quid each. So these pretty much cover the cost of the lot, which is why I probably bid so much on it. Um, but these are really cool. I've never had any of these before, and I was like, you know what? Go on, let's go for it. I want, I want to just handle these. I don't want them, but I will. I want to handle them. So we've got two Takara Micro Man figures. I have had some of the vintage Mego Micro Knots before, but I've never had any of the Micro Man figures, which is what they were based on from Japan. So we've got this guy right here, Military Force. Um, and he's got loads of accessories in the back. I will crack that one open because it's not, it's unused, but they're not sealed. So like you can actually like crack them open and have a little, have a little gander at them without damaging the packaging. And then we've got this guy right here who is a Magnaforce Magne Creer Metis. Whatever that means, I don't know, but it looks like he's held together with magnets, like those old toys. Bloody hell, what are they called? Magna Magnetics and Geomag. They were both sort of the same toy but available at the same time. Geomag and Magnetic, there you go. Those, like that. 
Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a Microman figure. Is he? Yeah, he is a Microman figure. He says at the top that was. Um, but yeah, Microman Magnifor. He's all held together with little magnetic balls. Um, so yeah, he's really cool. I really like these. I say you just don't you don't really see them. I um, mean, you can get them on eBay. I mean, if if you're patient and you look on sort of international eBay, some of these pop up and they go for like a couple of quid. But over here, when they pop up, they're like 20, 25, 30 quid. And they can be more. So those are the two things which really I was after from them. Like they're really um sort of quite interesting things. I mean, if I took these along to sort of a toy fair or a comic convention, um, it's the sort of thing which you know, if you go to a convention and you're looking for something specific and your thing that you really want to buy is these, you're going to get there and no one's going to have them, but I might. So that's why I like to, I always like to get the sort of slightly more unique things, the sort of things which aren't as well collected, but are the things which, you know, you don't see too often. It's the sort of things that I like to sort of keep around. So we will crack them open. As I say, the box wasn't sealed. I don't think it's been taken out of the box ever, but... Bloody like his his head has just flown off. I'm gonna have to find that quickly. Hang on, we'll uh, we'll see if I can find it. If not, I won't worry too much. Um, I've got I've got the I didn't even realise I've got They Live playing in the background, or at least the opening with the bloody title screen. You can't even see it with with me in a bloody way, but but that's there. If you see, enjoy it over my back while I rummage for the head, I suppose. If I can bloody find the stupid thing. I, I don't think it's going to show up. There's I've, I've got I've got figures all over the place. I mean, I don't want I don't want to shuffle things around too much. But let's have a little gander. Is that it? There we go. There he is. So I want to move these quickly. I've, I've I say I've got I bought this set of um, not to flex, but I bought this set of Django figures a couple of days ago, and they just rocked up, and I've um. I've just got them kicking around. I don't want to knock them over because they are quite expensive figures. Um, but uh, but yeah, it goes. So here's the figure. What was it called? Military man. Um, it's in the little bit here. Yeah, military force micro man. So uh, yeah, they are really. He's actually got some kind of like frosting on it on the plastic there. Um, but these, yeah, they're like really tiny little poseable figures. So they're really well articulated. You know, they've got like joints all, lo all over the bloody show and they come with just an absolute ton of accessories so you can see in there you get all dozens of, I say dozens it's probably less than a dozen interchangeable hands you get all these different chrome accessories a little base and yeah they're just really nifty I mean personally for me I think the style of them I think the style of these is a bit boring but if you're into um if you're into them they are they are cool they're very nice figures for sort of for what they are and I think you can get sort of outfits and stuff for them, or at the very least, you can get. Um, more, I'm more I'm more familiar with the Dennis Fisher Robo Henshin, the sort of like larger scale action man size ones, which you could buy like Power Ranger outfits for. Those are really cool. Those are really nifty. Um, these you know, a little a little bit boring, but they are cool. I do like them. If that makes any sense, which I don't, I don't think it really does. But uh, yeah, there you go. So there's Micro Man fig. So yeah, there you go. That is the collection. That's um, that's what the lot cost me. Well, that's what that's what the lot contained. As I say, what did it cost me per item? Is is like the best way of working it out. So we've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I'm sure there was twenty. Say twenty items, fifty quid, about two pound, two pound, three pound a piece. I don't know why I just bothered roughly calculating it when I've worked it out so roughly that it's just inaccurate. But you know, you know what I mean. It's like two, two, three pound an item, bloody good deal. Some nice stuff here. So um, there you go. So we're gonna end here just very quickly on this little, a little beer segment. Just a little, little review. As I said, I don't really have too much to add to it. It's just, it smells, it smells like beer. Tastes like beer. But, uh, but yeah, I do, I've been very, very into sort of watching beer reviews lately on YouTube. And it's something which I think is very interesting, you know, to, uh, some kind of, I would like, I'd like to, you know, try more brews. I'm very particular, just stick to the same beverages, you know, like this one. And I'm thinking, you know, it'd be nice just to try some new stuff, see what other brews are about there. So that's why I, why I hopped down to m and today. 
and uh, bought a couple of interesting brews. So I've got some more boxes of stuff on the way, which will be arriving in the next couple of days. So I'll do that. I'll review a brew and open a box of figures. So if that don't sound like a good bloody deal, I don't know what does. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. But uh, Hop House 13, what am I going to rate it? As I've said already, this is like my favourite. I don't, I don't really want to create a, a scale to review it on because I'm not going to be consistent with anything else. But I'm just going to say this is the benchmark. This is my, my favourite brew. This is here. So any other brew compared to that, no matter how different or incomparable it is, is going to be compared to that. So uh, there you go. Hop House 13. What a brew. Recommend it. Very tasty. Very tasty. So, you know, it's a warm evening. It's very humid. It's a bit sunny. It's a bit warm. The sky's grey. And it just hits the spot. It's the perfect mood for this brew. So there you go. So there you go. What can I say? What more can I say? Well, I'm just thinking of stuff to say to round off this video. Um, other than I think it's a pretty good lot. If um, you think so too, feel free to chuck it down in the comments. It'd be interesting to know if any of you lot think it was a good purchase. Um, and as I said already, if you see something here which you're like, you know what, I bloody wouldn't mind owning that bad boy, uh, feel free to hit me up on the gram, Facebook, down in the comments, or on eBay. Or well, if it's on eBay, just buy it. Um, you know, it's all available. I don't think there's anything in here which takes my eye, really. Personally, anyway. But uh, yeah, cool lot of stuff. So I've got more on the way, as I said already. So stay tuned for those reviews. And we'll see you soon. So goodbye. Have a nice evening. Crack, up, crack open a few brews. Crack open a few boxes of figures. And uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.